Hi, I'm Phil Cheatham from Skilled Motion Concepts. And I'm John Dunnigan from White Mander Country Club. And we're going to talk about the sway, thrust, and lift graph for the pelvis. Along the bottom of this graph here, we have seconds, seconds through the swing, from the backswing to the downswing to the follow through. Along the vertical axis, we have inches or centimeters, measuring either the amount of sway or the amount of thrust or the amount of lift. But what is sway? Well, sway during the backswing would be negative, moving underneath zero, would be moving away from the target. And what part are we measuring of the That's pelvis? That's a good question, John. We're measuring the center of the pelvis between the two hip joints, not the front on the belly and not on the back, but in the middle. Good. And then sway on the downswing would go toward the target. So we can see that in the graph. In this particular example, if you look at the green curve, that sway, and you can see, as John said, that it's below this line here, so it's negative, so it's moving in the backswing. It's moving away from the target until we get to top of backswing here. And in fact, if you look closely, you'll see that it starts to swoop up before the top of backswing. What's that mean? That's a really wonderful thing because that means the lower body is actually leading out the golf swing. And the top of the backswing is defined as what? The change in direction of the club right. itself. So if the lower body doesn't lead out the change of direction, we're going to have sequence problems and most sequence likely. Sequence problems and the club's going to be coming down too early and that's going to lose a lot of power and possibly even accuracy. Right. All right, so let's look at this section of the curve for the sway. What's going on here? Well, it moves rapidly, as you can see, upwards. What that means is the whole body, or in this case, more uh, exactly, the pelvis is moving towards the target. What do we like to see here? We like to see, oh, about four to six inches of sway towards the target. That would be typical what the pros do. We like to see, which we don't see in this particular golfer, we like to see a little bit of a stabilization here. What would that be? That, that would be as I started to post up on the lead leg and ro rotate. Yep, yep, the rotation would be there, so that kind of stabilizes. Anytime you see a little deviation in that curve, it means the motion is, is stopping or the velocity is slowing down. So then we look at what happens in the follow through. So they've actually swayed towards the target a little bit more after impact, so they keep going. So we're way up this bit. way. Yep, and then he kind of settles back just a little bit. So that's one example. We can have multiple examples of how people sway forward, uh, towards and away during the swing, but for this segment, that's what we'll talk about. Now we're going to talk about pelvic thrust, which is the yellow curve. And what does that mean, John? Well, pelvic thrust is movement toward the ball and away from the ball. It's much easier to see from that view, but in a golf swing where our original view was, we'd see it this way the belt buckle moving in toward the ball or away from the ball. All right, and remember a point here. We're measuring a point which is central between the two hip joints. So that means simply that if I turn on that right hip, it's going to look like it thrusts a little bit forward towards the ball. So the ideal shape of this curve is not no thrust, i.e. not flat. We want to see a little bit of an up, a little bit of a down, and then a little bit of an up again as the pelvis moves a little bit forward as I post on the right leg, load the right leg, and then the other one comes forward, so it comes forward again as I post up on the lead leg. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here, we see this person is thrusting a little bit too much forward because again, we want to see it only about an inch or so. We've got like three inches of thrust going on here. So from this view, and this is during the backswing. Yes. That's problematic. The golfer is actually thrusting in toward the ball. Yep, and they could be lifting up at the same time, pushing out like this that, way. couldn't they? Coming yep. out of posture. Coming out sure. of posture. And this could cause major ball contact problems. Yeah, and as we go through the downswing, we see that they don't really sit back. We don't have that little sit back squat nope. that's so typical of a, of a really good swing. And then it even goes up again, right before impact. What are they doing there? What do we call that? That's early extension. Do you think this person would have difficulty rotating with that much thrust? Those two can affect one another. There's no question about that. What we'd rather see is that sit back, sit back. 
what a drill that I always like to think about is putting the, the board behind their butt cheeks, if you like, so that you can push that back with each cheek, pushing it back away. And one of the things that I like to do is put my hand, if you would turn around, Dr. Phil. I will. I put my hand back here and try to push the golfer forward somewhat. Go ahead, take yeah. a little backswing. I'm pushing him this way. Now he's got to resist. Yeah, so that's I'm a good one. I like that. I sometimes will put a cardboard box behind them, and they've got to push it back, too. Right. So that one works good. That's uh, pretty good for the thrust curve. What do you think? I like it. Now we're going to talk about the lift curve, which is the pink line on the graph. So what do we see? Again, remember, the vertical axis is in inches. So anything below the zero axis, which is this line right here, is drop. The person is dropping down or sitting down or lowering the pelvis. Anything above that line would be lift. So what should the shape of this particular curve typically look like? It should look like an S. It should drop down, and then it should rotate and lift back up, and then drop down slightly again. You want to give another demo of how that's going to look? So, well, one of the things that's really interesting is when. When? Yep. When, do, when do you start? You can see this golfer begins to lower into the backswing. Yeah. Some golfers don't do that. They lower in transition. Yep. But either way, they get down. And I've seen typically that there is just a little bit of drop just before the top, and it maxes out just after the top. So I, I call that load and explode. Load and, I like that. So we're, we're into the ground, and then we're going to start lifting as we rotate through. Yeah, so you post on that lead leg and that lifts the pelvis. And guess what? That actually helps with the release of the club. Helps yeah. to increase speed because that energy in an upward sense helps the release explode into the ball. I like that. We've just looked at the graph. Now let's look at the avatar so that we can actually see the motion that we just talked about that this graph displays. Go ahead, John. So. I would like you to consider two things. If you look at the hips, if you will, the virtual hips, you may get the wrong conclusion, just like you might do if you were using 2D video versus 3D analysis. We're going to look right up in here. That's going to be our kind of reference frame for the center of the pelvis, and you'll see that start to move. And the funny thing is, you'll see the hips look like they sway forward and they Especially don't. Especially the, the back part here, if you look at the outside of the pelvis, we're looking at the inside of the pelvis between the two hip joints. So let's have a look at that. So we can see the backward sway of the center while this looks like it's way forward now. As you see it happening on the curve up here as well, right down here. So there we go, backward sway, approximately two inches. Now in transition, before this club starts to come down, this golfer is going to start working toward the target. That's the forward sway in the positive direction. Continue on. And he, well, he just keeps going right past the golf ball, doesn't he? And here comes the lift section right here. Take a look back, back a little farther, please, sir. And watch that same point as it starts to work upward. There he goes. Yeah, now, the interesting thing, John, is these motions are all happening simultaneously. But the cool thing about the graphs is we can isolate them and look at them independently. And then you can come back to the avatar and see how they all work right. together. And then, so if we looked from the side view, we can get an idea of thrusting toward and away from the ball. There you could see that center of that pelvis thrust right in toward the ball. That's the two inches. And then, unfortunately, he thrusts even some more Yep, see into those here. hips. Oh, my goodness. They're really moving forward, aren't they? Now, as he does, this is my point earlier, it's very hard to rotate with that much thrust. And you get yourself stuck in here, too. Yep. Stuck, club face wants to close, path wants to go way to the right. All right. 